Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is my Forbes colleague, Zach Everson. Zach, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me back, Brittany. You have some reporting. Trump's Wall Street Tower appears to be underwater, according to your latest report. But let's go back to the beginning here and give us the history of the building. It's 40 Wall Street. It was at one point, as you point out, destined to be the tallest building in the world. That didn't come to fruition, but take us back to then. Sure. So uh, 40 Wall Street, it was going to be built as the Manhattan Company's uh, headquarters, which is a bank that was founded by... uh, you know, those famous muses of Broadway, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. Uh, they were planning on it being the tallest building. And shortly after it went up, the Chrysler building bested it because they built the massive spire in secret, which, you know, well played Chrysler building people well played. Um, the other thing that was unfortunate right when it opened was that it was shortly after the 1929 stock market crash. So all these companies that had committed to Uh, being tenants of the building were no longer interested. So uh, the business plan didn't work out originally either. So then between the 20s to now, how did Trump end up getting his hands on it? Sure. So in the 80s, it really started changing hands a little bit. Some of the secret owners were uh, Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos, who secretly invested in the building. Uh, That year, a group of investors led by a uh, Hamburg um, shipping magnet family also bought the, uh, the, the, the land. Um, then, you know, Marcos's assets were seized, the building kind of bounced back, the leaseholds kind of bounced back and forth between who had it. And eventually Citicorp was stuck with it. They didn't want it. Downtown real estate wasn't doing well. So they sold the, the leasehold to Donald Trump. So he does not actually own the building, but he has the leasehold, like the right to lease out that building to other tenants. Uh, he signed a 64 year ground lease with the, uh, German shipping family and let's say got it for a mere $1.3 million. 64 years that was about 30 something years ago so he still has a good chunk of lease left how much does he owe uh he owes a significant amount now you can actually see the exact amount because he signed this mortgage he refinanced it in 2015 with ladder capital and they promptly chopped it off and securitized it so you could see how much is owed through the um four different filings with the with the SEC that for the four different investment vehicles. So he owes about one hundred and eighteen million dollars on the building. Uh, The way he's been paying off his mortgage has largely just been paying interest. So he owes one hundred and eighteen million of the original one hundred and sixty million mortgage. The loan is coming due in 10 months. So how much is Trump's equity worth? Uh, The building itself, when, when Forbes valued it, uh, came in at 116 million, which uh, 116 million is two million dollars less than 118 million, which you know, if our estimates are correct, does put it slightly underwater right there. Um, so not a major amount that is underwater, but certainly not in a place where you want to be as you're about to refinance, and uh, the building is having a bunch of other problems as well. So essentially, the building's not earning enough money to cover the rest of Trump's loan. So then the question remains: How does he pay that back? That is an excellent question. Um, they, we reached out to the Trump organization. They did not answer. Uh, he could try to refinance with another organization. Um, he could try to pay part of it down and then refinance part of it elsewhere. You know, the problem he's having is that the building is also just, uh, it's a money loser right now. You know, never mind the fact that the investment's underwater. You've seen occupancy rates there have plummeted. And we're getting this off of, you know, again, since the loan was collateralized that their SEC filings, you can get this from where you're seeing that the occupancy rate in 2015, when he first took out the loan, it was 94.5%. But then it's dropped in 2019, it was 89, then 86, then 82, 74. And then last year, it was down to or June, rather, it was down to 73.9%. And you're just not going to be able to make your money back and make any profit when your occupancy is that low. And that's we're seeing that's exactly what's been the case when he's reported his income. Um, income has fallen from 40 uh, from in 2019. It was 41 million to 2022. It was 30 million. Uh, there was a bit of a bounce back last year when it went up 3 million. Not sure exactly why it could just be escalating rent clauses with existing uh, tenants. But um, yeah, he's just not not bringing in the money there that he needs to to pay to service the debt. 
I mean, from 2020 on, in 2020 especially, the pandemic really decimated any commercial real estate in New York City specifically, and the market has had a tough time bouncing back. So do the math for us. How much is this building making Trump a year? It's making him just about $1.2 million is what it made him last year. You know, not bad. I would enjoy having some sort of asset that brought in that return for me, but it's nowhere near what ladder capital it projected it would make when it uh, gave the loan to Trump in 2015, when it projected that he would be taking home $11 million. And I would love for you to dive, I would love for you to dive a little bit into the land lease situation. How is that throwing a wrench into his finances here? So it is right now he's paying about $2.5 million in annual rent to that German shipping magnet family. But that is set to change dramatically in 2033, uh, where it could escalate to at least 6% of the value of the land. So an estimate that was done a few years back um, thought that his ground, his, his rent on the leasehold would soar from $2.8 million in 2032 to $16.3 million the following year. And you know that that's just doesn't make this investment tenable whatsoever. So you know, we also reached out to uh, the Hindberg family, the ones who, who own the building, uh, to see if they were open to renegotiating with, this, with Trump, if they've had any conversations. And they also did not respond to, to inquiries. His legal troubles cost him millions in recent years. So, I mean, we talked about earlier, how is he going to pay this back? What's the future of this lease and with Trump in it really look like? Uh, it's a giant question mark. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what, what's going to happen with this. You know, he has some options. He could file for bankruptcy uh, again, it, although it would be his first bankruptcy that doesn't involve a hotel. So that's new. Um, but you know, he'd be on the hook for, I think it's about $25 million is what he'd have to pay, but the rest of it, he'd be able to just walk away and leave the mess for somebody else. He obviously has a history of having done that. Um, mentioned earlier, he could try to refinance, he could pay down part of it himself and then get a mortgage for the rest, but it's gonna to be tough finding a lender when you're looking at this lease on a money losing property that's already underwater. Well, Zach, definitely a lot to look out for. Per usual, I appreciate your reporting. You're welcome back anytime. Zach Everson, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.